You may be seated. Man, that worthy, worthy, worthy. If we could just catch a glimpse, like really what we just said, worthy, worthy, worthy. If you could stand before the Almighty. And allow just his majesty to soak into you. That whenever all the angels around him and all the saints are around him singing worthy, you understand what they're saying. Not just, uh, yeah, he's a good person, he's a good guy. The incredible amount of love that he's loved you with. His plans for just mankind as a whole, just worthy. The sacrifice and the attention to detail that he's paid uh, for your life, we all need a, a fresh grasp of, man, you're worthy of everything. As we were singing these songs, all these songs were just st strategic in the aspect of just allowing us to partner with heaven's cry. You know, you got the saints that gone on before, they're, 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 you know, that heavenly host that's saying, hey, keep pressing. This is our final service of this year. It's a great time to, to reflect. You know, this last year, what were the stumbling blocks? Those are always the good ones to highlight. Make sure the stumbling blocks of this year that caused dullness in your life Make sure they don't repeat this next year. But you're guaranteed to repeat it if you don't recognize it. Things that, vicious habits you got into, we use stumbling block as a new, a different, just say it a different way. Vicious habits that you were looking at. This is the generation of the eye gate. Vicious habits you got in that literally at this day, when you stood before the Lord, what would be burnt up? What brought your marriage to a higher place by you looking at those things? What brought your family to a higher place because you were looking at those things? What, what was that? What brought to your communion, your brothers and sisters, what, out of those things you looked at, what would be burnt up? Or what, what actually rolled over and, and, and provided a supply to your brothers and sisters? See, so we're... Just coming off these, this little uh, teaching on the lukewarm church and about the importance of just not operating in, in, in gifts, but the importance of fruit. You know, I can get around people and, you know, if there's an immediate need and I hear that person just tear off and pray in the, in the Holy Spirit and it just... There's a sense that can spe see spiritual about your life, but it's, it's not those little moments that I'm so, I want, what is the fruit that bears out of your life is what we're trying to go, go a hold of. You know, there's some very inspiring worldly people. Just because you give a encouragement to some, somebody, worldly people give encouragement. But worldly people cannot produce supernatural godly fruit. Okay, there's a difference in the supernatural element of fruit or just be kind. See, the church is settling for worldly expressions and leaving the heavenly inheritance on, on, to the side. It's like, no, we're, we're here to produce fruit, not just for me, but for others, my family, my, my, my community. Amen. So. What is the Spirit saying to the church and what is the Spirit saying to you? That is what the Lord really wants to hammer in. I made this announcement on Wednesday. I'm gonna make it again today. This is our last service for two weeks. Why for two weeks? 14 days. It's actually a little more than that, but four services. Because I believe the topic's so important that it takes not just to be a hearer only, but a doer. And I'm gonna give you all the ample time. You cannot say, when you stand before the Lord, I just didn't have time. I know, I mean, it was like, I heard the word, I really received it, but that was like the busiest time. You know, Bri, you won't be able to say, Lord, I just started a new job. It was chaotic and hard. 
He's like, there's, there's no reason, Brian. It's, this, it's so important. I'm not asking you to do a Bible study on a church day. I think it's way, uh, way more than that is what I'm asking. I'm asking you to do some serious thinking, which is the hardest thing for people to do these days, is to have creative thought. See, we're being programmed just to repeat like parrots. See, why is it so easy? Why is it so easy for the enemy to pick on you? Why is it so easy? He just reminds you of your past and your failures. It takes zero creativity for you to remember your mistakes, failures in the past. Or the blame game, you could blame somebody else. It takes zero creativity to, to enter into that, that game. But sons and daughters of God are not to enter into that game. What's in the past is in the past. It says, a man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back isn't fit for the kingdom. So why is it the enemy can just come up in there, remind you of a few things, and you're just having a bad day now? See, we gotta say, homie, don't play that. That's not who I am. I'm not gonna be identified as of, with my past failures. What did Jesus die on the cross for? Who the son sets free is free. But because... Jesus says it like this, the harvest truly is plentiful, but I got a bunch of lazy servants. They won't think outside the box. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. People that can think outside and grab a hold of something and transform something. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm asking you to do, I got a, a, a big worksheet that we're gonna pass out at the end of the service. If you sit down and knock this mug out in two days, you fail. There is no way you can fill this thing out in two days and it actually be right. I'm not asking for Christian answers. I'm asking for you to be before the Lord and have real responses. It's about having vision for your life and prioritizing the vision. It's gonna hit, it hits a, a lot of different categories. It, it asks you what your vision is. And then you're gonna to have to answer, how am I going to apply this? It's gonna take more than four services to get that done. You're gonna to have to have daily conversation with your family because they're gonna be involved in it. It's gonna be very important to have that conversation with the Lord and friendships, amen? See, where, you know, I said it earlier, where, there is a, where there's no game plan, the plan is to fail. Do we believe that as Christians? See, I got this beautiful picture of a waterfall here. This is how most Christians try to find their love walk with the Lord. I want you to get in your car and go to this place. The best guess I could do, I'm like, it's somewhere in the Midwest and more than likely that waterfall only happens in the spring. So I probably ain't gonna find it right now. But get in your car and just start following roads and just turn and go and, and you're looking for something that would just key you in to find that waterfall. This is your life with no plan. What are the chances of you finding that? It may take a while. And there's a possibility you don't ever find it. Just by randomly tearing down roads and, you know, I think this looks like a good way for a, you know, we'll head west. And then we're gonna keep riding. It's so important to have a game plan. It's so important to have vision for your life and not just your vision, but you want God's vision for your life, amen? So your, your past mess ups this year, has no, it cannot stop or has no effect in the future. Why? It's in the past. 
And right now you are in a new moment. Now, if you're going to take the lazy approach and every time the enemy just throws a woe is me and I suck and I'm not, you know, I, I've wasted time, I've done this and I've just messed up so much. Well, you probably ain't going to find the waterfall because you're looking backwards. We're looking forward. You know, I said it earlier that this next year could be the most powerful, your greatest year of ever loving Jesus if you want it, if you want it, nothing can stop that from happening. Only you can, if you want it. But you know, uh, Hebrews 11, one, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Do you have hope for this? Are you like thinking like, man, I've tried this. I just don't know if I can believe this. I've been stuck in the mud for like my whole Christian walk. Is that what's gonna define you? See, we don't want your view of your life to define you. That's why Jesus wrote it down for us. He says, you're gonna need my version. That's why I wrote it down. I said, you know what? Not all this is valid until every jot, tittle, and <laughs> till all is fulfilled, amen? We don't have a new heaven and a new earth right now, so we got, it, the, you know, the standard's good, Amen? It's important to make sure that we're renewing our mind on what God told us to renew, renew our mind in. Our thoughts control our feelings. You need to pay attention. Your thoughts control your feelings. Why is it very important to take, they take thoughts captive? Everybody that has a depressing day, I'll go ahead and say, it all starts with a depressing thought. A moment, a just. Your feelings control your actions. So now the feeling becomes an action. And this is, this is applied for most of the time. There are some times that, you know what, a spiritual person can have feelings that their actions speak otherwise. When those, when those feelings are not right, the battle is on, but a spiritual man will respond different than what he's actually feeling. But for most of the time, through your daily interactions, the, the, this, this runs pretty true. So important to take thoughts captive. Second Peter 1, uh, 5 through 9. There is fire on this scripture if you'll, if you'll grab a hold of it. We've heard it a lot. I gave it to you as homework to read the whole thing. But it should be a meditation that's just growing with an, 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 uh, expectation. And it says, but also for this reason, give all diligence. Is he being an exaggerator? Give all diligence, add to your faith virtue. I think everybody's done that, okay? Let's just check, this is your life box we're gonna continue to check off, okay? Your life box, you've added virtue to your life. That means you have, you're looking to a positive, godly direction. Everybody here has done that because you know what? You're seeking to grow in the kingdom. You've given your heart to Jesus. You've added to your faith virtue, amen? To virtue knowledge, I think everybody in here has increased in that. To knowledge, self-control. Now, to a small degree, I think, you know, that's debatable. I think there no doubt has been self-control throughout every person's walk in here. Now, is it operating on a steadfast level? That's debatable. All right, self-control, perseverance. Now, I think everybody in this one has grabbed a hold of perseverance. Don't mean you were happy doing it. Don't mean you had the most edifying spirit Why, you know, walking through perseverance. But you made it. You might be weary at the end of it. You might be frustrated at the end of it, but you made it. Amen? Well, this is where you start to get excited. Those things test the waters. 
See, it's somebody that hasn't ever been tested, they say they want everything. It's like, no, young blood, you don't want everything. You know, over a period of time, you realize that, but in the very beginning, you feel like you're ready to like cast out every demon. I want to have demonic conflict and go hard. And it's, you know, I just tell this and dealing with the souls of men, I just, just bring them to the light. Years later, you're like, bless it. Youth, you know, gotta appreciate the zeal. <clears throat> but all right, so we're in, you know, perseverance. Let it shine, godliness. This is where after, you, you, after certain things are tested for a, long, uh, for a period of time, you begin to renew your mind and grab a hold of the Lord. Guess what happens? There's this thing produces godliness. It's the next step. Or you could step in pers- uh, stay in perseverance and weariness the rest of your life. You have to just grind it, persevere. Just your love walk with the Lord is a struggle. I hope, you know, if I'm tagging somebody, you need to renew your mind because you're not supposed to live in that. You should be able to go through hardships and struggles, persevere, but man, godliness is still just beaming off of you. Amen? But the reward is right now a transformation of godliness. This next year, you can shine more godliness than you've ever shined in your life. Out of that, godliness transforms the way you love people. Brotherly kindness will not be just a duty, but just a natural byproduct of who you are. And out of that brotherly kindness, love will no doubt be the identity that you wear. Colossians 3, 1 through 25, that's just for you. I want you to read it. It's such a good one. It says, if you were raised in Christ, seek those things that are above. Amen? Where Christ is seated, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. How much of this year in your mindset was set on earthly things? Well, if you have no vision, of course it's gonna go earthly. It's the easiest thing to do. It's what you you can sit down and have earthly because you don't have to think about everything because it's hand delivered to you in this age of lukewarmness. You gotta be careful, you gotta be you gotta be careful when things come easy and free. It's not always the best things to get. Amen? Do not let the enemy steal another year of who God created you to be. You're supposed to be some of the most creative people on the planet. They, literally, you have a standard of setting your, your mind on things above, things that are holy, things that are pure. Amen? Why would we do that? Just to think of like a... just. Be this monk in the middle of nowhere just thinking of holy and pure thoughts? Come on, get real. We're here to transform a demonic and demonized generation that has literally zero creativity and being programmed to have zero standard, that everything's a standard. Whatever truth is to you is truth to, is to you. God wants us to be a people of distinction and hold the line. But I think it's almost impossible to do this without a game plan. The Bible says, without vision, you cast off restraint. Throughout this year, many times, vision was grabbed, but guess what? Got lost shortly after because what? Zero game plan, zero accountability. God's ways work if you apply them, amen? So I want you to read that one uh, for yourself. You got plenty of time. Romans 12, one through two, it says, I beseech you, brethren, uh, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
See, we present our bodies to our, to our work. Got to have the body to the work. Don't get paid unless it's there. It's so important to make sure our relationship with God cannot just stay in the mind. I believe a lot of it starts in the mind, but it needs to make its way out into action. You know, it's important to make sure that you're being transformed. That means not just in your mind. When you have that transformation in your mind, it should manifest in your body. It shouldn't manifest in your face. Man, I'm so tired of looking at sad people all the time. We gotta be ones that rejoice, exceedingly, just joy. See, the thing is, that last one that we were singing, what was it? I started off with it. I said, worthy, holy, worthy, worthy. If we realized how worthy he was, you'd be like, dude, my life is amazing. Why? He's worthy. He's worthy of the smile in the midst of your weak affliction. It's weak. It's momentary. Amen? It's only big because you meditate on it more than you meditate on his promises, his love, and his goodness, his mercy. Time and time again, he bailed you out when the shadow was trying to uh, swallow you, and you realize, guess what? There's no one behind the curtain. There was nobody ever there. You're You're gonna crash and burn, and guess what? You stayed high in the sky and never faltered. So uh, present your bodies as a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. Would you say you've been conformed more to Jesus this year or more worldliness this year? Maybe in some areas you did get a little more Jesus, but other areas got a little more worldly. Because if, you're, if you didn't go nowhere, the kingdom's advancing. That means you got left behind. Well, I think I kind of just held the ground. Well, the cloud kept moving. <laughs> Amen? So these are, as we're talking, you know, we, the Lord's, the Holy Spirit's have been tagging on the lukewarmness. Those are things that you should be writing down. Because if you don't write them down, you will forget what the Lord just spoke to you. That's one of the importance of writing down the vision. Amen? That's why I got a worksheet for you. I want you to be thorough and write it down. Then you, uh, I think Josh is uh, going to send it out in a PDF form that you will be able to download on your phone, have it on your phone. So you'll have it on your phone. I encourage the hard copy too, at least for the very first, write it all down and then type it in your phone. The thing is, you want to make sure that this is important to you. It's important to have a game plan. It's, it's important what do you want? See, right now, if I put everybody on the spot right now, you're gonna give half-hearted answers because you really haven't thought about what you really, really want. You'll give a few little things and maybe the spirit will flow and you get to roll, but it would be a, mm, well, how, how come that hasn't happened yet? Is this a new concept, a new idea? None of it would be new. I'm just like, this is what I feel like I'm going for. See, this is where we're gonna, we're gonna conquer. We're gonna, that is mine. This is my inheritance. You gotta begin to believe it. See, the thing is, nobody's gonna believe uh, anything higher than you do about yourself. How am I supposed to partner with you? You got zero vision, but like, hey, God bless you, buddy. No, but when you're around somebody that has vision, when you're around somebody that's like, dude, they got a little hunger going there. It's like, man, I can partner up. I know where that hunger is. I want, I want to be, I want some of that hunger. I'm going to be blessing that person in, for their vision and hunger. Amen? If it seems a little intense, it should be. We're talking about this next year. 
Right now, the Lord's got you held and got you captivated. If you don't do anything right now with this, maybe the next year is completely a waste again. Maybe you wasted this year. I don't know what you did with this year. I don't know what kind of fruit was produced in your marriage this year, in your personal relationship with God this year. And you're witnessing outside this body. What is the measuring scale? People's names, people coming to you for some counsel and some wisdom. By, by the time you ought to be teachers, you have to be taught again. See, the thing is, people should be coming to you because you've been in this game long enough to, to have something, amen? You, you should be presenting the gospel in such a way that people actually want to hear it, living it, seeing it, amen? This is to put a big chunk of salt in your mouth to make sure this next year you're the most zealous, wholehearted, and free. See, the thing is, you know, uh, when you're making this list, I want you to be practical. I'll give an example here. So say, hey, somebody wants to lose 20 pounds of fat. It's kind of vague. I want to lose 20 pounds of fat in the next four months. You don't say I'm going to lose 20 pounds of fat in the next three weeks. I'm not going to read the whole entire Bible in the next three weeks. You'll be brain dead and have no fruit of it. You got to make realistic goals with some accountability called a timeline. When, when, when do you want to see this activated in your life? When do you want to see some of this stuff happening? See that also you got to make sure I'm going to work out four days a week. More part of that game plan. I'm going to cut out 500 calories out of my diet to make sure I accomplish. These are things, how do I accomplish this? So when you're writing things down, you got to come up with strategies of how am I going to accomplish this? See, a lot of times people have these outlandish goals, but zero way, direction to get there. That's just saying, hey, there's a waterfall somewhere. Just keep riding. Maybe you'll find it. It's not how life works. Because what happens, you're going to take a right here, a left here, and then you know what? You're going to forget what the heck you were even going for and get some, wow, that, hey, that's pretty. And you're going to follow the next little shiny. I want you to be sobered because the thing is, there's a lot of people's lives that are dependent on that you actually be real. The world is looking for the real kingdom. They're looking for authentic people. They want to believe in Jesus. It's just the, what, the, the, the version they've seen presented to them looks, something's off about it. And this is, this is our honor to wear that badge, to grab a hold of the vision. Vision for your life, God's plan for your life, Amen. All right, so this comes from a Harvard study of graduates of Harvard. They, they interviewed all these guys. They're all graduates. And asked them, hey, you know, do you, have a, do you have goals for your life? 3% had goals that they actually wrote down. 13% had goals in their head, but never wrote them down. 84%, no goals. Well, they went and checked on those people 10 years later. The 13% made twice as much as the 84. The 3% made 10 times more than them all. 10 times more than them all. And this is just naturals. Why? Because they had a vision. They had a game plan. They, they wanted to hit the mark. What is the mark that you want to hit with your life? What do you want somebody to say about your life when you're, the Lord tarries and we, we pass away? What would you want your children to say about you? What would you, want your, what would you want your friends to say about you? Be known about your life. Some, the problem is most people don't even care because you know why? They only live in for one, themselves. 
Well, I ain't really too worried about what people think about me. Well, that's why you live like you live and the kingdom is not being advanced. You should care what people think about you in the aspect of, is you, are you representing the kingdom rightly? No, no, men are gonna speak bad about you. They're gonna not agree with you. But in the aspect, am I representing rightly? There should, Daniel had uh, tons of accolades thrown towards him. He was hated by some of his fellow co-workers, but Daniel got, pray, uh, got elevated and promoted time and time again because of what? His character. He was known as a wise man. He didn't just flesh out. He had holy convictions and standards. Even when it came to eating the king's food, he's like, look, I just can't do it like that. And because he had this conviction, it was respected and honored. Proverbs 29, 18, we've, we, we repeat this one a lot. Where there is no vision or revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is the man that keeps the law. Amen? I'm glad he wrote it down for us. You know why? So we can be happy. God's ways work. They bring life to you. Amen? Uh, but the flesh profits you nothing. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 5, you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, or with all your might. I like the word might. You should put out when it comes to the kingdom of God. And when I think of might, I'm thinking like we strain in it to the max, you know? You're putting max effort into accomplishing this task. You know, <laughs> When you call for a moving day, you want might, not mice. I want some muscle. I want some people that can pump it out. Amen? It's important to make sure your mind is being renewed that, you know what, I'm going to do max effort. I want to love him with all my heart. Can't do that without a plan. I want to love him with all my mind. Can't do that when you fill it with trash. Can't do it. You're setting yourself up to fail to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength if you fill your mind up with a bunch of garbage. That's spreading, you know, taking the trash out of the trash can, spreading it through your house and acting like, you know, I just cleaned up. It doesn't work that way. And if we could really see what's going on in the mind, it'd probably be gross. Man, we've got to clean out some trash. This stuff stinks. It is robbing me of my eternal destiny. So we go back to Matthew 25, where he's given the parable of uh, two different ones, the uh, 10 virgins and, and then the, the, the three servants. Everybody should have a little holy grip in their heart when you read over this. It's like, dude, I don't want to be the one to let the fire go out. I don't want to be the guy that buried what God, my assignment, that what I was called to do because I lived in a lukewarm generation, I just buried it and did what was easy. I just went with it, what was easy. The first thought that comes to your mind, whatever, however your days just led, I just go with the flow. You're not going to accomplish much. You know, we discipline our body. Why? So we can advance the kingdom. See, these words like discipline and structure, they're not evil. They war on the soul because he likes to do whatever he wants to do whenever he feels like doing it. He doesn't feel like doing nothing most of the time, so it's nothing that you do. We want to make sure that it, I delight to do the will of God. See, I have to call guys on a regular basis to stop what they're doing, to have some type of meeting or conversation that's unscheduled a lot. I've never had them just complain to me how inconvenient this is. Dude, you're calling us for another meeting? We just did one last week. Time and time again, time and time again. 
for whatever it is. I'm not saying all of them are crisis. Some of them, it's like, look, we got to get a game plan. This is, you know, I think a lot about investing in people. It's like, we got to have a game plan. We got to make sure the vision's true. We're unclear on a few matters. We got to wrap this up. There's strategies that I'm un, you know, the thing is I want, I'm always, hey, I want the best possible strategy. We, we're unclear on this one. Is this, is this what we're going with? Is this, everybody feels this is the way. But it's the delighting to do the will of God. It's not because these guys live boring lives and they don't have awesome families they'd love to stay home with. It's because they delight to do the will of God. Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets that you may run, or uh, that, he, that he may run who reads it. Write the vision down for this year. So when you, make it plain. So when you read that joker, you're running. Three months from now, you realize I'm still running. Six months from now, I'm, I've covered massive ground this year. Four times more than I did the year before. See, just a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of our effort goes so far when the Lord's back in it. I mean, just look at the little effort you do in your soul and how much it causes. Much the more the kingdom of God. We need to look at things that we uh, started this last year and didn't finish. Why didn't you finish it? Did we have a game plan? Did we lose motivation? Was the, was the task that you started just birthed out of just a reaction that something you watched, something you heard about, and you just knee-jerk reaction? <laughs> That's what I want to do. I'm going to do it. And then, then it just fizzles out over a period of time. You know, just because you look at somebody's other passion doesn't mean it needs to be yours. Man, look at this guy, dude. He can just snipe things like crazy. I just want to be a good shooter. Who cares if you can shoot good if you can't hit the mark when it comes to the kingdom? Like, is that really what you want to waste your time on? Like, we got to get perspective of what you really think is good and cool and you want to put effort into when you have, you're unequipped to give godly counsel in intense situations. Or we can't even rule our own home. The peace of God. We have too many stumblings in our own home. This is, that's rule number one. I'm going to get my house in order. Amen? It's going to be a place of freedom. Because you know what? God is going to be honored here. Because we have a plan to honor him. If you don't have a plan to honor him, you're not going to honor him. Come on. That's a hearty amen. Everybody's guilty of that one. And I know I'm intense, but I'm like, dude, it's got to be intense. How many more of these years do you think you got? At the end of the day, no one's promised this next one. Let's at least start it off super strong. Let's start it off running as fast as you can. That should be a wake-up call to everybody. So when you're going through this, it's important that you talk it out with your family. It's important that just because you are the head of the house, got the spiritual game plan, that it's actually applicable to your family. It's important to make sure that we're, you know, we're getting 
I put in one of these categories, fun, because this is what's gonna happen. Some of you are gonna have no problem with the fun thing. Other ones are gonna have extreme problems with the fun thing because they're gonna feel guilty because they're not going hard enough because they actually plan to have fun. It sounds silly. Maybe you've never gone that hard. If you've gone that hard, guess what? You realize you find yourself in that boat. Chris, you ever found yourself in that boat? Rach? Absolutely. If you go hard, there's a point where you're just like more, 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 and then you almost do feel guilty for having fun. Hey, and a lot was accomplished in this side. I would rather you live over here than Mr. Play, because play's easy and you get lost. But I wrote it down. You should be planning your most elaborate vacation ever. That's not what that fun thing is. It's about redefining and having quality uh, play time. You do need to know how to play and relax and not just do, see, play and relax doesn't mean you just get to do what you want unless you're doing it by yourself. You wanna go play and relax and have fun without your family? You're weird. It's important to make sure that you wanna have fun with your family. Amen? Now, I'm not saying a little long time ain't bad. I don't mind crawling in a stand, but a deer stand, but I like doing it with my boy better. I mean, to his company, right? Way more exciting. Uh, me and Jay got tickled in the stand the other day, and we about messed it all up. We got the tickles and couldn't stop laughing. It's like, you know, you're just trying not to just let it out, but it was funny. Make sure you, you know, just watching that overachiever mindset and not making those ridiculous, you know, uh, timelines. Uh, This would be, you know, like number one, it's write out uh, your overall vision for your life. That's a, I just went blank. I can't even think of it all. It's a lot. And that's what's gonna happen. When you like try to think of the overall view for my life, it's gonna go, beep. I should have this. There should be something more. It's coming. That's when we got time. That's why you need to take this serious. It's just not gonna just, there's things that you want to, that's a great question. Lord, what, what, what is that? You know, don't do the knee jerk. This isn't a test. You sit down and take it and be like, whew, done, got it. When do we turn it in, Dan? It's ask the question and, and, and talk it out. You might go through the whole thing and get nothing. It's okay to do that. It's talk it out. Like, man, overview, you know, maybe I'm overthinking about it. Like, vision for my life? Like, that's intense. I know that's me. I'm going to go with that. I know I will overthink that. I'm like, wow, if I had to think of like one or two things, what would that be? Like, overall. But it's, it's great. I encourage you, like, as you go to sleep, that you're reading some of this. So if you're one of those thinkers, you gave yourself something to ponder as you go to sleep. You know, as you're sitting there getting just one or two questions, like, hmm. You know, according to me trying to read the whole thing, I'm like, whoa, whoa, babe, just two. Like, it's too much. I'm just here to think. And I go to work again. She went, ooh, let's go. I already know her. Just give me two. Just need two right there. And then two seconds later, I'm out. I'm not gonna read through all this. Y'all are well able and capable of doing all that. But I would love hearing some feedback and as you go, you know, I encourage you, don't be isolated for the next time. I want you to encourage and this should be a, a, a conversation piece. If I talk to you and you don't bring this up, you're going in the bad book. <laughs> and I will be bringing a message when I come back. I'm just gonna be going around calling. How's it going? It's going good. All right. 
got a message for him. But this is, I think it's life changing. My family's life depends how, how serious you take this. There could be great gains and such rich inheritance if, I mean, we just read the statistic here. If just a handful of us do this, radically changes the output of this body. I mean, if three families did it, it would radically, I mean, we're talking about 10 times more effective. What if we roll back this next year and everybody was five times more effective than they were? Radical change. So we all have the ability to produce this radical change in each other's life. Do not do a normal service on Wednesday or Saturday. Like, oh, we're just gonna put some worship music on and worship music on and do a Bible study. That's not what you should be doing. You should be learning how to have relationship with your family and kind of find what is what is profitable here. I'm not talking soul binge. I'm talking about profitable conversations with your children, profitable conversations with your friends, profitable, something that's stirring to you to go harder and deeper, amen? This is not the time to go on a deep dive on some whacked out study. The study is being able to communicate your heart with the Father, get receive, Ah, there's some weeds in there. I see that now. This is the plan. Amen? It's to petition the Lord, petition your family, things that you've, things that your husband has struggled with, things that your wife has struggled with, or things that your children have struggled, not being okay that we are still struggling with these things. We are sons and daughters of God. We should have victory over these things. And just because you brought it up and it went over like, well, it just went over not that good, doesn't mean you don't bring it up again. It means you come up with a strategy to bring it up again. You just don't like wait to the moment where it burst out. That's uh, not profitable. But strategically, praying into it, waiting for that moment and say, all right, see it. These godly conversations, guess what? Great moments to bring it up. To help each other. That, you know, the thing is, it's like, yeah, you know when I, you kind of like react sometimes. I react sometimes? Well, it wasn't my heart to react, but you still do. Okay? Well, I want to reel that in this year. I don't want to be a reactor. I want to be somebody that can listen, process, then respond. Amen? It says the fool keeps, if he keeps silent, he, he's considered wise. He can be like, wow, that's a wise guy. Actually, he's just stupid and he just stays quiet because he didn't know what the heck was going on. But he's considered wise. Because you have the guy that thinks he knows everything and it's like, oh my gosh, this guy again. Just digging himself deeper the more he talks. We don't want to be those guys. Amen? So I want to uh, you, you, there, be praying for freedom in your home of expression. The more you think about this, the realize you realize, man, I don't think so much. I just react to things in my past or what I've seen. We want to get out of the reactionary when we want to get into that creativity. We have God-like nature inside of us. He's called the creator. So there should be some creativity going on. We shouldn't have like no ideas. We shouldn't have we, no solutions. See what happens, we're constantly bringing up problems, but the thing is God doesn't just bring up problems. God brings up solutions. The kingdom of God produces solutions. You got problems in your life. Everybody's got problems in their life. You'll continue to have problems in your life if you don't look at God who has the solution. You begin to set your mind on things above, guess what? You start getting solutions. You start filtering the eye gate, guess what? You get solutions. You don't filter the eye gate, you get apathy and problems and no creativity. 
you just become a parrot of what this world shows you. Amen. All right, we're going to pass these things out. Can we get a little helper here, Ban and Justice? Yeah, pass them out. Everybody gets one. <clears throat> All right, we just said pass them on the floor. Let's just do it. <laughs> oh. I love you guys. I mean, this should be exciting, right? We're like stepping in the new year and not even going to church. It's exciting because the Lord's trying to get our attention. Why do you put somebody in time out? Number one, they've done something wrong. We have a broke system. He's saying, you're going in time out. I want to teach you something here that you come back with a changed nature. That you have vision of my ways. All right? I take it that, hey, I'm a time out. The Bible says God corrects that he, those that he loves. There's no doubt there's some things that need to be corrected inside of all of us. If we look at it on this, you know, without, you know, the Lord is no doubt trying to get our attention. He just gave us three messages about lukewarmness. So he's definitely correcting us. We're going in time out because you know what? He's like, you got to have a, you got to be still for a little bit. I am going to encourage that you go on a media fast. Now I will give a few little guidelines on that. So if there's a few teachings or certain things that you can edify yourself and like help cultivate your vision, it's allowed. But just entertainment and, and soul searching, just chill out. For the next two weeks, we want to really, you know, give yourself some space. You want to make sure, you know, it's going to take three days just to break bad habits. We want to make sure our knee-jerk reaction is just setting our mind on things above, not towards our phone. Amen? We want, to, we want to set down some things because we want to reorganize for the most prosperous year that we've ever had. Amen? And what is worth that? There's nothing. At the end of the day, we're here to advance the kingdom of God. We want to, you know, I just uh, encourage you, you know, we want to pray for one another. I encourage you to pray over every household in this place that we want, we want some real relationship growth in our, in our personal relationship with God in our overall relationship with our family and with our brothers and sisters and yoked in assignment, amen? That we can be transparent, that we can literally advance the kingdom like we've never done before and that this year you can be 10 times set apart, amen? Not because we're just hoping uh, this turn goes that way and uh, I'm feeling this. We want to get off the feel roller coaster of just good ideas. Write the vision down. Stay. The thing is, give yourself some grace. You might dial it and you realize like, whoa, that was a little outside my grace. Sounded good. And we're going to, permission to rewrite, you know? But uh, no shame and condemnation in the, in the rewriting. But if it, you know, just be, uh, be spiritual in the matter. Amen. All right, I love you guys. You have a blessed Sabbath. Hope you rest and you're excited about what God's about to transform your life. Uh, you're gonna produce the highest output you ever have in your Christian history. That just sounds good saying it. Had some pretty good years, you know? So I'm like, hey, about to double down. All right, love y'all. <clears throat>